Aloha everyone, young and old, and thank you for watching our program today. Sparky would go, a Kauai talk show for the whole family. United States Senator Spark Matsunaga was born on October 8, 1916, and raised on Kauai, Hawaii. Born Masayuki Matsunaga, and the beloved Sparky nickname was given to him by his elementary school friends. Sparky liked the name so much, though, that he legally added it to his birth name after World War II. If we emphasize the life and works of our greatest contributors, people will come to realize that moral courage is bravery of the highest type, and America will be called the champion of peace. Sparky was a political visionary who dedicated his life to peace and a united world. This program series honors those people and organizations who are living examples of how to persevere through the hard times, showing us that our lives are worth living. Hi everybody, Mark Jeffers here. I wanted to talk to you briefly about my friend Dave Boynton. Uh, Dave was a great, great naturalist. He was a person who knew nature better than anybody I ever met. I met Dave about 1990. And when I met Dave, uh, he had just come within a year out of the forest where they were trying to track a very rare Hawaiian bird, o'o a a And so um, they believed that they had heard him for the last time way, way up past the Alaka'i. And Dave was very, very excited about finding birds in the forest. At that time, um, we had the Christmas bird count. We would go out and count, just count birds, just count birds, any kind of birds in the park. And we always had fun doing it. And Dave was the person who would always introduce us to the sounds and the sights of Amakihi, Aniani, Ao, Elipayo, Akepa, Apapane, Iivi, Ou, Akikeke, Akekeke, Akikikikiki. I just, I just loved all the names of the birds that he knew. Dave was a person who knew many things and shared them when it was appropriate. Uh, he and I became good friends because of his love of nature, but he also loved the fact that I was a theater person and I loved to tell stories. I used to be the, I guess you'd say, the honorary story storytelling person around the campfire at Kokei. Uh, Dave would do a thing he called the one match fire. He would build up the fireplace and then if I couldn't light it in one match, then we would tear it all apart and do it again. No, um, he, was, uh, he really appreciated storytelling by the fire. He was a good storyteller himself, and so were many of the other people in Kokei. Uh, but one of the things that we always loved about uh, stories by the fire was the children always wanted to end with ghost stories. They always liked the feeling of being scared. Uh, so I began to tell ghost stories and I began to realize that that's a good way to bring about respect for the natural world is, is to talk about the cyclical nature of life, how all life has to come and go, come and go. And when you're looking at the forest, you see as many things that are dead as uh, things that are alive. And so that's the difference between the forest and the domesticated world, the world of um, a hotel garden or even your own personal garden. Uh, it's the being able to see things in their cycle, in their life cycle. So Dave was a person who pointed this out to me, and he pointed many, many things out to me. And uh, well, one of the things that Dave really liked was my rooster puppet, uh, who was born in 1990, uh, but not as any friend of the forest necessarily. He was more of a friend of Queen Emma when we performed our Wahine Ho'onoho Mauna, um, and our friend Saber Kauka was the queen. Well, she needed uh, to be awakened on her journey into the forest. Uh, she had traveled there back in 1871, and so uh, we created this, this little puppet that I'm holding right here, and this little puppet would like to say a few words about Mr. Boynton, I think. Um, how about it, Russell? Maybe he doesn't want to say anything. I think he does. Okay, oh, can we close the camera down or up? Okay, yeah. right. nobody's gonna look at you now. Nobody's gonna watch you. Except everybody. Okay. How's it everybody? My name is Russell HKPJ Rodriguez. Okay, I'm a Hawaiian Portuguese chicken. Actually, I'm not a chicken. Oh, wait, wait. I am a chicken, uh, but I'm a rooster chicken. Yeah, anyway, um, I was born in Cook. No, I was born on a big island 
and I moved to Koke and live with Uncle Mark. He's my right hand man. And I met Mr. Boynton uh, one day on the trail. That's <laughs> right. We was walking on the trail, me and my buddy Calvin, and uh, we stopped to smell the flowers, right? And guess who was there? That rascal manoni, Mr. Boynton. Yeah, he was, uh, he would just appear suddenly like Menehunis. That's right. And um, so, anyway, he introduced me to so many plants. Oh man, I can't even remember all the names, but we love the plants and we learn to love the plants from Mr. Boynton. That's right. Hey, that guy, he, he made Menahuni houses. I saw that. And after the storm, you know what he did? He even made bus stops for the Menahunis. That's right. Uh, these trees had fallen down, right? And, um, and uh, so he made a nice seat out of the tree. And then the Menahuni would come, sit down in a seat, and they would wait for the bus. And they would wait and wait. But, you know, in the forest, the bus not going to come up there, right? So <laughs> those Menahunis get fooled every time. Yeah, they would just wait for the bus. The bus never came. So they would just look at each other and then go home. So anyway, it was Mr. Boynton and I, we made a joke on the Menehunis. So uh, yeah, we remember our friends, uh, Marsha Erickson and uh, Shirley Akita and uh, Wally Kawane and all the National Guard guys who helped to build the Koke'e Discovery Center and especially our friend, Mr. Eddie Kamai who made a movie called Listen to the Forest because when you listen to the forest, it talks to you. It talks back. It says so many things. You're supposed to learn about that. Anyway, my family lives up there still. I got family all over the island, but we just wanted to remember Mr. Boynton and many, many, many times that we enjoyed our life in the forest. Take care, everybody. All right. Hey, all you guys, how's about for fun? We take you out to a nature note, and you guys get to learn something about this island from our uncle Dave. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. It's time for a Dave Boynton nature yeah. note. Okay, and, and take if it I'm, away. If I'm elected mayor of this island, I'm going to have lots more nature notes, Calvin. We will have nature notes for breakfast. <laughs> nature notes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, well, take it away, Dave Boynton. Here he is. He knows take about away, plants. Guys. All right. Check it out, guys. Hmm. Looks like Nehe to me. Nehe. Nehe. Hi, Uncle Dave. Hi. Hey, How's it, Uncle Dave? What did you call this plant? Well, it might sound like a horse talking, but it's not. The Hawaiians called it Nehe. 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 Yeah, wow. Nehe. 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 Is it Nehe or Nehe? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, that's really good. it looks like a daisy, and it, it is. It's a type of daisy, and there's dozens of different types of daisies. This is a native Hawaiian one. And uh, boy, where do you find this, Uncle Dave? Well, you know, here at Kilauea Point, there's a big hill. We call it Kilauea Crater Hill. And up on the top of that hill, I've seen it grow. It's a real nice, thick ground cover. Oh, ground yeah. Cover. yeah. Ground it cover, around. it means it kind of grows low to the ground because um, here I have a potted one, and it's sheltered. But up in the wild, it grows in the wind, strong wind, and so it kind of lays low to keep out of the wind. Oh, yeah, we know around. about that wind, don't we, Russell? We sure do, yeah. boy. Ooh, that wind blows, especially well, up blew his guys. feathers, I'm telling you, Uncle yeah, Dave. But, but this yeah. plant can hold out in the wind, that day. Well, it sure can, and not only that, down here by the ocean, the wind has a lot of salt spray. So if you check out these leaves, they're very waxy. It's kind of thick and waxy. Waxy. Yeah, that's yeah. like Kelvin's head. Oh, yeah, they're thick and waxy, Russell. Yeah, yeah that's like your head, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you, uh, if you went up into the mountains, there's some other close relatives of the Nehe, and they have thin leaves because no more salt spray, not so much strong winds up there. So wow. You mean this plant grows at the ocean and grows at the mountain, too? Yeah, that's another one of those I ocean know. and mountain kind. Wow, but the flower looks all the way around. 
Yeah, not like that other one we saw. I forgot that name, but this is a composite flower. There are two different types of flowers in it. It was kind of hard to tell. These are these. Well, these are called the ray flowers out here. It looks like a sunshine yak, Calvin. Oh, that's a beautiful plant. <laughs> I, I'm not going to eat that plant. Oh, it might man. poison the fish or something. <laughs> hey, me and Calvin, we got lots of respect for plants. Oh, yeah. Well, this one is not the fish poison plant, but it's a little beauty and, and sure would be nice to plant around your house. And, yeah. uh, you know, these flowers are going to turn into a whole bunch of seeds, so it's not quite ready for seed yet. But someday, if you guys find some seeds, Take them home and plant them in your yard. And yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Hey, Uncle, one more question. Yeah. What kind of bugs would jump on top of this flower and uh, drink the juice and fly away? Uh, let me see. Um, maybe a leaf hopper. Leaf hopper. Yeah, I don't see any bugs on it, but... Oh, uh, good. Yeah, yeah I always look for bugs, that's why. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I taste a bug that I've never eaten before. Uh -huh. You know, I look for flowers to smell, and Russell looks for bugs to eat. It's kind of a partnership. Yeah, well, yeah. that's cool. That's why we like to go looking for flowers, right, Calvin? Yeah, that's right. You know what I look for them for? What? I look for them to look for them because I like looking for them. Yeah? Huh? Yeah, he yeah. likes to look for them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I yeah. get what you mean. I yeah. just like finding stuff in nature. And, and that's why we have... A Nature Note! <laughs> yeah, thanks, Uncle Dave. Hey, wow, buddy. Right on, guys. Yeah, Nature Note. See you later. Take it easy, Uncle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hear you. What do you remember? Oh, I remember going up there with my fifth grade class. We were actually the first class to stay at the Discovery Center. And actually, my mom was a chaperone. And she met Dave and fell in love and the rest is uh -oh. history. <laughs> so from about 11 uh, years old until, you know, when he passed, he was not only my teacher, but also my stepfather and my friend. And so um, I have lots of really fond memories of learning from him, but I'm curious uh, to hear what you, like your experience was bringing students up there because I was a student but you were a teacher working with Dave to help instill a love of the forest for students. So what do you remember? Uh, I, let's see, I started teaching in Kapa in 2000. Mm -hmm. And in 2000, we took uh, sixth graders up to Kokei. And uh, I remember we took uh, 60 students. We took over the Discovery Center and Camp Sloggett. Wow. <laughs> and we were hiking through the forest and we were doing... But the, the thing about Dave that, that just struck me, and I just, I wanted to be around him all the time, I wanted my students to be around him all the time, was his love of Big Mama Nature. That's what he called it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, he had this relationship with nature that was so genuine, and he wanted to share it. And, and you know, in school, a lot of people are like, okay, here's what's in the book, here's what has to, but his book, was Big Mama Nature and his relationship. And I, I really believe that he wasn't trying to teach a book, even though he was a scientist, mm -hmm. even though he had a scientific approach, you know, the way he sang the scientific names and stuff like that. But he had this approach to being with nature that came from a relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and he just wanted to nourish that, that, and uh, that, creativity that that uh, cultivate that relationship yeah. between an individual of any age <laughs> teachers too it didn't matter he was the, just the oldest kid in the group <laughs> it was fun we'd be walking through the forest and I'd look around and there they were all these kids including mr. Boynton who was just <laughs> the tallest one of all the kids so that as a teacher that's what I remember is just being there with learners and having Uncle Dave share his his love of Big Mama with everybody. Yeah, I remember that too. You know, he definitely was the biggest kid and I think that's why his teaching was so effective is he was able to take that like cerebral scientific knowledge that he had but deliver it in a way that it reached the heart and it reached the inner child like that we all have inside of us. So he, he brought it and taught it in a way that was super playful and fun 
and even sometimes a little bit, um, you know, snarky. And <laughs> he would like pick out kids that thought they were kind of like, you know, the big man in campus and would humble them. He would hide in the bushes. And I remember, you know, like <laughs> make these pig noises Sorry. and jump, jump out at the kids and it, ah, they'd scream. And then they would kind of walk a little more humbly and a little more quietly. And, um, you know, he was really playful and fun. I think that's why his teaching was so effective. And I, that's, it's had a biggest impact on me in my life. I remember we would hike through the forest and I think the thing that I carry with me is that he looked at the plants and talked about them in a way that they were like his best friends. Like they were lifelong friends. Like he said, he sang the names and I could still hear his voice singing the names whenever I say uki uki or a'ali'i. I think of the way like I can hear his voice and yeah, pukiave, like I can hear his voice in my head saying those names and that's kind of something I've been inspired by that I want to share and carry with me is um, that deep love of mama nature and friendship and then instilling that in everybody that was around him. Russell, you know what time it is now? Uh, it is time to chase some more bugs around the yard. Well, that's always the time for you, but yeah. this time we're going to look at another plant. Uh, the plant. Oh, hey, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's uh, what you call the Dave, Dave Boynton. Dave Boynton is going to give us a nature, nature note. note. Hey, take it away, Dave. Hey, Dave. <laughs> All right, buddy. Good to see you again. Oh, my goodness. I know the sign not supposed to be like this. Uh, maybe I can fix it. I think I'm gonna need some help because I'm on Hey, you need a little help, Russell? Oh, I think. Oh, hey, Uncle Dave! Hey, I was just thinking about you because I don't can read. This is a long, long name, but this yeah. is a sign about the plant's name, right? Sure is. It has the family. The, the family. Convolulaceae. That's well, that's like, that's like the chicken. Yeah, well, family. there it is yeah. if anybody wants to say it right and, there. And yeah. check this out. Here's a scientific name. It's called Epomea pest capri. Epomea pest capri. That's right. Woohoo! Oh, Epomea yeah. pest capri. Have you heard of uh, Capricorn? Uh, yeah, I'm an uncle. What animal is that? Capricorn, that's, uh, well, that's kind of like a goat, right? Yeah, it's a goat, goat, goat and a fish together. And pest, that's like the word, the Greek word for foot. So goat foot. Goat foot. Go check foot. the leaves out. Why do you think this plant was called goat foot? Hey, hey, look at that. It looks yeah, like. It's like a golden It foot. looks like a. A, a goat foot. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So, Pest Capri is, yeah. is like foot of the goat. Foot of the goat. And so that's how they need plants. Yeah, when they say Ipomoya, this is in the morning glory family. And the Hawaiians had another name. They call it Po Hue Hue. Po Hue Hue. I like that one. Yeah. Po Hue Hue. Because, because they wake up in the morning and they say Hue Hue. No, I mean, how come, how come it's called Po Hue Hue? Well, I mean, how come Russell is called Russell? I don't know. Oh, I oh know. yeah, that's a good question. a special game. reason that the name I've is that. I've always name. wondered that myself. Been. Actually, Calvin, every plant has a name, I think. Well, it does, and sometimes the names really do have something to do, like the scientific name was like the shape of the leaf, and to tell the truth, I don't know why Pohuri Hui was called that, but I do know one thing. This plant grows down at the beach, and at it grows beach. closer to the ocean than almost any other plant. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. this can really take the salt spray, can't it? That's Uncle right, and feel those leaves again. Yeah. Feel how waxy it is. Yeah. Waxy. Oh, waxy, waxy. yeah. yeah. Well-protected. And so there's not much taste to them, a little salty, that's all. Matter of fact, you wouldn't want to taste them because these are uh, what, what would be called a cathartic. They make you kind of sick. They clean you out real quick. Ah, oh, buddy. <laughs> well, hey, I don't need that. Remember that, Kevin. Never to eat a plant that you don't know about. Oh, yeah, and don't even put it in your mouth. I know that. Yeah, boy. I but, bet the kids know that, too, don't you, kids? You guys know that one, right? Yeah. But you know, this one you can put in your hands for the old Hawaiian. Even though we see a little short one here, this was like a giant rope. And you know when you when you check this vine out, you oh see, yeah, it gets longer yeah. and longer. Oh yeah, and longer and longer. Oh hoy hoy hoy, 
maybe that's because you flew through the rope. Yeah, so, you know, it's like a this rope. was not a real good quality rope, but if wow. you needed one just temporary, yeah. this is what the Hawaiians yeah. use. You know, just that's to tie up your dog. You know, hey. I don't know about that. Maybe to Let's tie see up your work chicken. Here. <laughs> I knew it had a business <laughs> card. Hey, relax, buddy. Relax. It works. It hey, works. Hey, Boy, there's an old Hawaiian leash. Like to play with yeah. you. are yeah. a great guy, my yeah. friend. It's great to try these things out to see if they really work. Yeah, try it on Russell. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't have to do that. Oh. He chickens well, run away like oh. you know, but what I could do, Russell, if you ever uh, tried too hard to go fly, you know, I know you think it's kind of slow at flying, and maybe if you sprained your wing or hurt your wing, okay. Hawaiians use this like a medicine, and they would put it on the wing and wrap it up, and this would help the cure, uh, like, a, you know, like a sprain, a sprain or... Oh my oh, goodness, you mean broken bones? This plant broken bones? Is, is, is actually a medicine kind of plant? That's right, it's a medicine plant. And the ancient Hawaiians, they had to get everything for life from nature. And so they learned to uh, figure out all the different uses of plants. Because uh, they had to find the best one, right? That's right, they had wow. to find which one worked best because they couldn't go to the store or the hospital. They had to so do everything so this was their drugstore, right? Yeah, you bet. This was an important uh, medicinal plant for the old Hawaiians. Wow. Today, um, I'd love to see it down there at the beach. But you know what? It's kind of having a hard time because some people drive their trucks. Oh, yeah, vehicles. I saw that. And when they do, they should just drive on the sand and not run over our native plants. That's right. Boy, I agree with that. that. Yeah. And don't drive on top of the plants because these plants, uh, they was there first and they have a right to be there, right? That's right, and they hold the sand in place. And so if the plants disappear, then the sand dunes and the beach will disappear too. Wow, boy, we wouldn't want that. Yeah, wow. like, this is an old plant, so hey, we got to malama this plant, right, Uncle? You bet, and it's so beautiful. I don't know if you, I don't see any flowers right here, but if you can find the flowers, oh, yeah. we found some flowers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh man, Ooh, they're so beautiful. So nice. They're purple, right, Uncle? You bet. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I'd like to go down to the beach one of these days and see how the old Pohui Hui is doing, but. At least we got some growing here at the Kilauea Point Nursery so that we can plant more of them out and uh, we'll have more of them growing out here at the point. Boy, that's an important watch job, plant, Uncle Dave. Yeah. yeah, watch for this plant on the beach where it grows, right, Calvin? We're going to watch for it, Uncle. Yeah. Well, that's good because the more you watch, the more you learn. Yeah. And if you watch the Russell Show, then you can learn from our nature. nature. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming Thanks, Uncle Dave. Take care, Uncle Dave. Boy, Watch you out. sure learn a lot home. from Uncle Dave, don't you? Yeah. Talk about nature, right? Talk nature about plants, about everything. Wow. Hiking with Dave. Wonderful experience, and I've hiked I've with him many, many so times. I've never gotten so muddy in my life. Ah, you muddy. Uh, muddy. Up to the here <laughs> in mud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but always prepared, always knew what to do in any given situation that could occur. But I remember specifically the Pihea Trail because, uh, you know, they used to try to put the road in and the road didn't go in. But anyway, the hike is there and it goes all the way down to Kauai, Kauai Stream. Mm -hmm. And along the way, and it can be very steep at places, and David would always know the plant that was coming up. And, and that he wanted to point out to be sure that I would know that plant going forward. <clears throat> and if I don't know the name of it now, it's not because Dave didn't teach me, it's, it's because I've gotten older and sometimes I don't remember my oh, own not. name. <laughs> but um, I do remember the lobelias that he pointed out and how rare and special and the different compared the one to the other and how the birds, certain birds' beaks were mm -hmm. perfectly adapted for that plant. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the Olapa Lapa, that comparing it to the aspen trees mm -hmm. in Colorado, because the, the Olapa Lapa actually turns a yellow mm -hmm. color and it just flutters. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So he really instilled the love of those plants. Mm -hmm. that they're not just a plant you're passing by. Mm -hmm. This is something special here to know, mm -hmm. to know it's a friend, to know, yeah. Well, you bring up many, many thoughts about Dave and what a wonderful resource he was and what a wonderful friend. And uh, one of my enduring memories of Dave is that uh, 
after the hurricane in 1994-95, um, I actually, it was earlier than that, 93, I began to make kapa. I got very interested in making bark cloth. Uh, but I needed to find a place where I could find the, the, the po'aha plant that is used to one of the make some of the finest kapa, and Dave knew exactly where it grew. <laughs> well, exactly was like mm. four, four and a half miles down Kukui Trail from Koke'e down into Waimea Valley, then you have to cross the river, then you go up Kawaiya Stream, and there's three old villages <laughs> there, and it was between the first and second village, and he knew exactly where it was. And so we harvested some bauke from there, um, just the little shoots, and brought them up the trail. Now Dave, Dave was like a billy goat. He could climb up and down those trails in no time at all. Kaiopo and I were great about going down the hill, but coming back up, I tell you, I think the moon was out by the time we came back. And Dave had some cold ones in the ice chest for us when we got there. But he had also, um, he, he, put some water halfway down the trail so that when we came back up, we would have a stash there. But he was so knowledgeable about so many things, and I so appreciated his knowledge uh, because he also delivered some Hawaiian hardwoods like Ohia Lehua and Kawila, all these trees that had been knocked down in the hurricane. And he delivered them to me at my cabin and said, Safe, can you use this wood to make your anvils, your kua anvils, and your, your tools for kapa? And I said, Absolutely. <laughs> and I had one piece of kawila left that I just gave to a woodworker this last year to make into tools for uh, Halau Kale Mukihana Olena Ala to make their tools to make kapa for Mary Monarch in a couple of years. But thank you, Dave. Your memory lives on. Our appreciation for you lives on. Yay, buddy.